Good afternoon to all of you and welcome to Capdula webinar. So this is an important step for us as it's our first webinar in English. So some of the participants are regular attendees. Some of you are totally new, so welcome and thank you for joining us. Um, as you can guess from our name, our webinars are always about pain, pain management. And for this first webinar in English, we're going to talk about pain and surgery. So I'm pleased to welcome the three lecturers for today, Professor Eric Biguier, Dr. Philippe Butin, and Dr. Thibaut Cachon, who are going to share with you some of the latest innovation in surgery, innovations which, amongst other advantages, can significantly help in reducing post-surgery pain. So the lecture will last approximately 40, 45 minutes to save time for the question at the end. So if you have questions raising up during the lecture, please use the chat and we will answer as many as we can at the end of the session. So I'm now handing over to Victor Robalo from Novetech Surgery, our partner, who's going to introduce the session. Enjoy the meeting. Thank you very much, Leticia. So I'm Victor, the CEO and the co-founder of Novetech Surgery, and I will just briefly um, after uh, say thank you to Cadula for the organization of, of this webinar and to all the surgeons for their participation and all the attendees. I will just briefly uh, present our company which has been created in a in few years ago in Monaco and which is benefiting of of uh, several decades of experience in human uh, implant manufacturing. Uh, we decided a few years ago to uh, dedicate this now to uh, the veterinary and surgeon uh, and to help them to maximize the benefit of this treatment or to minimize the animal pain, coma, and recovery time. And this is why today free surgeon will present you uh, the physiological technique we developed for CCL repair or tendon repair, or as well, how we can uh, manage the pain uh, in post-operative surgery with a cryotherapy breaths. Um, I will now uh, let uh, which is from uh, the University of Vetagosub in Lyon, France, uh, who is working with Dr. Thibaut Cachon uh, in the same university, and then uh, Dr. Philippe Butin will uh, talk about the tendon. Philippe Butin was a referral activity in the French Alps uh, in France as well. Thank you very much, and Dr. Philippe Butin, uh, the, the, floor, the floor is yours. Thanks. Okay, yes. <laughs> so do you hear me? Yes. We hear you very well. Okay. So, um, we are going to talk about uh, articular ligam ligamentoplasty here and tendon reconstruction with synthetic uh, implants. Uh, it's been a long time now that we've been working on these implants. You can see here um, the Novetech implant uh, product uh, as a tendon or ligament. Here is a ligament, the tendon uh, synthetic one. Uh, you have two uh, possibility. You have the 4,000 and the 8,000 Newton, which is a very, very strong ligament. And you have a different size of screws. Uh, you can see on next picture um, that uh, we are talking here also uh, more about the Achilles tendon pathology, uh, which is um, what we've been working a lot uh, these, these few years ago, these past few years. So you can see, you, you know that the pathology tendon can be a rupture, uh, as you can see on the left uh, photo, which is uh, representing a dog with a complete uh, uh, plantigradi. Uh, he is completely plantigrade, but the, the one on the left hand side on, the, uh, on this picture, here you can see uh, a claw position, which means that the, this dog has a partial plantigrade. So this pathology, in fact, has many different ways uh, and also many different ways to treat. On next picture, <clears throat> You can see all these indications uh, and all the different pathology that you can find on the Achilles tendon. Uh, you can have a complete rupture, 
like a gastrocnemian, the photo you've seen, with a flexor digit uh, superficial uh, of so that that means that uh, when you have a complete rupture of this both ligament, you have a plantigrade dog. Uh, when you have a partial rupture, uh, it means usually that you have an intact flexor and uh, the gastrocnemian that has ruptured. That means for the dog to have a claw position, as you've seen uh, on the next uh, on the previous slide. Uh, you can have also antesiopathy. Uh, with uh, mainly the gastrocnemius. Uh, this leads to pain and lameness for the dog. And uh, we have a low diagnostic probably of this pathology. So I encourage a lot of people to do more ultrasound or MRI, of course, but uh, ultrasound is already very good to, to assess these, um, these dogs. Uh, we have also tendonitis and uh, elongation of the tendon. Uh, we have um, sometimes on the flexor uh, lesions on the hell cap. Uh, and again, you can have partially plantigrade dog, but also you can have pain and lameness. Uh, these again are sometimes uh, low diagnostic and we, we need um, to, to do ultrasound, ideally, to, to find them. Uh, the worst ones are musculotendinous rupture with uh, a variable uh, plantigrade again. Uh, sometimes uh, very difficult uh, to, to see uh, and to, to diagnose. So you, if, you, if you want to have a very good uh, diagnostic, again, uh, you should work with good ultrasonographer. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide, yes. <clears throat> so we decided to do um, a new technique, decline from the Morton ones from the V-cut in uh, 2015. Um, but this technique is differing from the Morton ones because we do a transcortical output tunnel. So it's not a blind tunnel. And we do, after this, a perpendicular tunnel. It means that uh, we can have uh, uh, probably, and that's we, what we showed in um, some uh, papers that are going to be published uh, very soon, um, we have a higher resistance to, um, to loads and uh, we, we have also a very nice possibility to, um, to place the, the tension of the prosthesis very easily. You can judge that more easily than before just because you, you don't have a, a, a blind tunnel. Um, so you can see on the, on the pictures that uh, you, you go through the calcaneum uh, and then you, you go transversely uh, with uh, an interference screw. On the next slide, you can see also that our, um, our technique is differing a little bit because we incise tendon uh, lengthwise at 50% of the diameter. Then we, we are doing uh, either a continuous pattern or simply stitches with polypropylene O0. Um, so you can see on the slide uh, the, all the stitches here. Uh, usually we put eight sutures if we, we do single st stitches, or you can do a Chinese finger knot with a continuous pattern with fiber wire, which is working very well also. Um, on the next slide, So what is very important here, of course, is a tension test. So we are uh, trying to assess the dog. Uh, the better is to test the dog on both limbs before surgery so that you have 
uh, an idea of this particular breed uh, and what the tension is, but uh, roughly it's uh, something that we are quite used to because when you do uh, the compression test, uh, when you are doing a crush ligament uh, disease, uh, you, you already know how, how much tension you have uh, in this test. So ideally you put the knee in extension and then you flex the tarsus, which leads uh, to a resistance on the non-pathologic non one, on the non-pathologic tarsus. But on the other one, of course, you will have a, a problem. So the, the the fact in this surgery is we you can adjust the tension exactly uh, at the time that you want. Uh, when you achieve the tension, then you can uh, put an interference screw uh, in the perpendicular tunnel, and then the, in, the implant is locked uh, definitively. On the next slide, please. So here you can see the biomechanical study we've, we've performed in uh, 2019. Uh, we had eight sample uh, cadavers and we, we did um, uh, this to, to know how much Newton we had uh, before uh, the, the rupture of the implant. On the next slide. So you can see that the, the interference screw interface between uh, so the, the bone and the implant was very, very high, uh, going up to uh, 1,000, uh, which is very nice and a very good surprise. Uh, we were above all literature done until now. On next slide, we can see the results of the tendon suture. Again, we were very high, around 700 Newton, uh, which is uh, high and uh, more than uh, walking dog or trot dog. So, of course, we, we were very happy with these results. Um, so, again, that was very high and above literature. Do you have the next slide, please? So this is a comparative uh, bibliography and uh, we were around 5% uh, to 150% more uh, between bone fixation or muscle fixation, uh, or it means tendon fixation. So this is uh, the best that we had uh, until now. Okay. Next slide, please. Okay, we performed also a clinical study uh, since uh, 2016 on 10 dogs and we had um, uh, put bandage uh, with brace or half valves uh, for six weeks on uh, most of the dogs. Uh, we had uh, really an excellent functionality at eight weeks. We had no descents, no calcaneus fracture and uh, one infection. Um, we were lucky because uh, the removal of the prosthesis at four months uh, with antibiotics before, of course, um, conserved the functionality. So we didn't have uh, a catastrophic uh, um, uh, reoperation to do. Uh, on next slide. So the average of the surgery was uh, 80. Uh, just uh, before, please. Yes, uh, 80 minutes. Uh, we had uh, so excellent, excellent uh, functionality. Oh, yes, it's it's almost the same slide here. No, so you can uh, squeeze for the next one. Yes. So the most important, of course, is the benefit that we can have here on this technique compared to other ones. Uh, we most of the time don't have a very rigid immobilization um, because we are not using external fixation and sometimes we are not using uh, valves, uh, resin. So that's the 
it's it's very good point because we we are um, against ankylosis. You know, uh, we are um, avoiding ankylosis uh, as much as we can with this technique uh, because of the postoperative care. Um, the very good point also of this technique is that patient and the, and the indications because we have a large variability we can do very small dogs and very uh, great dan or big dogs you know um also the very big problem that we have in uh, other techniques sometimes is the chronicity because of muscle retraction and the large gap that you can find sometimes um also you can have sometimes calcaneus fracture at the antesis, but with so much bone stock that you can't realize, uh, you can't perform any uh, obanage. So it's nice because this technique is doing the job very nicely. Uh, also, we can do antesiopathic chronic uh, lesions, um, and uh, that has a very, very nice um, results because uh, we had uh, no lameness after this surgery and uh, the dog had um, big problems before uh, so we avoid as i told you as much as we can external and internal fixation complication as uh, infection or descent uh, the problem, of course, uh, you cannot um, avoid the fact that it's uh, you, your asepsy must be perfect um, on this surgery. And uh, if you have any uh, septic wounds or open wounds, you, you shouldn't do uh, the surgery with an implant that is uh, uh, going to, to infect. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so it's time for questions. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Brita. De de definitely, we, we, we invite you uh, to any uh, price or, or technical information on the product itself to contact directly uh, the company or, or Manuel Garcia that has left his uh, mail address into the chat. Uh, and we will either uh, give you a direct answer or send you back to your local distributors. I don't see any other question regarding cryotherapy brace, neither regarding ligament or tendon uh, reconstruction for the moment. There is another question uh, for Dr. Philippe Butin by Simon Kugning. Is your transverse bone tunnel distal on the limb or proximal to the longitudinal bone tunnel, closer to the tarsus? You, you just need to reactive your microphone. So, oh yes. So, yeah, the, the transverse bone tunnel is uh, distal to the to the first um, to the first uh, tunnel and uh, it's a little bit closer to the to the tarsus we we are uh, also um, it's very important also when you do these holes uh, these bone tunnels that you have um, the diameter of a complete screw uh, on any uh, part uh, of the calcaneus, not uh, to avoid, of course, fractures. It's very important to to avoid these things. There is a second question for you. That is, um, so you keep oak flexed while inserting the interference screws. So you keep oak flexed while you. Inserting. So, no, in fact, um, you must um, uh, choose uh, your, uh, your tension on the implant 
uh, while the, the, this implant is uh, positioned, of course, into the two bone tunnels. And when you, when you are uh, okay with this, uh, you you can put um, uh, a kosher uh, clamp that will maintain the the tension and then yes it's a little bit good to to keep tension on this uh, but you don't have to do a, f a very high flexion uh, of the tendon the the only thing that matters is that the 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 implant is uh, is tensioned in the in the bone tunnel so that it's facilitating the insertion of the screw. So there is uh, two other questions run regarding the CCL, but Professor Viguet seems to not be able to answer right now. So I'll continue with you, Dr. Butin. Uh, where was the point of failure in the Achilles repair during cadaver testing? Um, so most of the time, so we, we tested uh, both parts, um, you know, we, we tested the interference screw uh, on a part and we we tested uh, the, the sutures on another part. So I can tell that the, the point of failure uh, regarding the interference screw uh, was uh, in fact uh, that the, the implant slided inside the hole and it, because of the tension. So the tension at one point was so high that the, um, the, the implant was able to slide a little bit inside uh, and that was uh, the end of the test. Uh, concerning uh, the, the suture ones, uh, at each time when we did uh, the, the simple stitches, uh, we always have a, a breaking, um, a rupture of the polypropylene uh, and not at the knot size and not at the knot uh, location. So all the knots that we had done, uh, everyone uh, never felt. So always the, the problem was always uh, uh, the, the suture that uh, at one point broke. And we have another question that is, can we use view scaffolds in, uh, in dogs for good recovery as in human? So I guess, yes. Uh, the, the, the problem is, is always to know um, what is this bio scaffold is uh, is uh, giving as a biomechanical resistance? Uh, so that's what we we can uh, we can um, uh, say. But the bio scaffold uh, on this implant is uh, for now very difficult. Uh, if you want to apply it on our implant, uh, it, it's not done yet. Um, Dr. Vincenzo Santoro, uh, get back to its first question, which was, uh, so you keep Oct flex while inserting the interference screw. He added Oct, so you clamp one side, thanks. But do you keep as starting reference the standing angle? So I think he would like to know on which position yes. you, you you have of the leg when you manage the tension yes, and the fixation. It, it's exactly that. So you you need as a as a starting reference uh, the standing angle. It's it's uh, exactly the the problem. Uh, so you usually we we are uh, uh, putting the, the interference screw when we are in um, in the standing angle but the the most important i would say uh, more than the, the the fact that you put the interference screw is to find the good the good angle uh, that will matter for the dog so that will be uh, um, a normal standing angle for the dog Thank you very much. 
At this point, we do not have any other question. Thank you. For, for Dr. Philippe Bultin, uh, there is another uh, question regarding the sutures. When you, place, when you place your sutures proximally for the Achilles repair, do you place through the split tendon on one side, through the prosthesis, and out the split tendon on the other side? So we, we are, yeah, you, you hear me, yes. Um, when we place the suture, uh, we are going through the split tendon on one side, then through the prosthesis, and then through the split tendon on the other side. Yes, the, the, the question was right. Um, and when we do the, the Chinese finger knot, it's uh, quite the same. Thank you. Uh, At this point, I do not see any other question. I see uh, Sarah Oleman that uh, asked for rejection of the synthetic implants. Um, I don't believe that we can uh, uh, tell that there are very there are real rejection. Uh, as more infection. Yeah, it's more infection, as Professor Vigier say. When you, it's almost like any implant. When when you don't have infection, usually, um, well, I mean uh, bio bio implants, <laughs> but uh, we we don't have re rejection of this. Uh, it's very well tolerated this one, and uh, we are very happy with it. So for the for the uh, Achilles tendon. Um, we must be very careful with dog who has uh, bites, uh, who was bite, bitten because uh, some uh, lesions are infected and it's impossible to put in the first intention uh, such ligament. Yeah, you shouldn't. As I, as I told uh, in my slides, uh, don't use this technique if you have any open wound or uh, things like this. Okay. Well, if there is no other question, I think uh, we can finish now. Uh, thank you very much to the, the three of you for your conferences and for the time you spent uh, into the, the question and, and answer time as well. Uh, thank you to uh, all the participants to this webinar uh, and to Capdurea for its uh, partnership for this uh, webinar as well. Um, you can access uh, to uh, this uh, webinar as a replay video as well. Um, and uh, Novetech Surgery will try to implement webinar each month uh, because uh, of, the, of the period we are, uh, we are living right now. Uh, webinars is a good way of, uh, of uh, sharing experience. Uh, so thank you very much and we hope to see you uh, again in the next one. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. See you. Thank you.